Good morning. Monday, 4th of October, 2021. Today is the 40th anniversary of the infamous Fairs Fair in London. Brought in by the long defunct Greater London Council. In 1980 to 81, London Transport had been subjected to two heavy fare increases by the GLC under Sir Horace Cutler. And at the end of 1981, or late 1981, October, the GLC was under a Labour administration. And they brought in Fares Fair, which cut fares on the buses and undergrounds by up to a third. Prior to this, um, the administration of Sir Horace Cutler had brought in what they called the Fair Deal, which if you ha have a look at this bus map and this orange area around the front on the, in outer London, you could travel anywhere on one bus in that area for 25p. However, in this area here, central London, and out here, on these red lines to North East, it's like Upshire, Epping, Loughton, and down here, like Staines, um, Sunbury, and all the way down past Weybridge, the graduated fair scale in force at the time remains. However, as I say, the fair's fair, brought out in late 1981, which I'm just about to show you a map of these zones for, would reduce fares quite significantly. It's worth pointing out at this moment in time that there was a plan to include British Rail in these fares scheme, but this was blocked by the government who took back a large proportion of the GLC transport budget. Fares fare as you can see from this map, had the city zone, the west end zone, the inner zone, and the outer zone was basically the former flat fair area, which you've just seen. And services still ran to various places in the Act County area, um, like Dartford here in the south east. Um, graduated fares remained on those sections. However, down here in South East London, somewhere, um, where I am, you had Bromley. And this council, Bromley, was far away from the underground. British rail fares weren't subsidised, and they were subsidising bus fares. And they felt that it was illegal. So... So Dennis, their leader, Dennis Barkway, launched a legal action and it went to court. The law courts, or the high court, um, said it was legal. Bromley appealed, the Court of Appeal said illegal. Um, the GLC went to the House, appealed to the House of Lords, they said illegal. And in 1982, fares doubled. Fares fair was dead. However, the GLC decided that, a reef, that they could go back to the drawing board and in 1983 they came back with the Just the Ticket, um, which they went to the High Court and got a legal ruling on and it was declared that yes, it was legal. So there could be no further legal wrangles. And in 19, and in 1983, the travel card was launched with fares fair. Fares were reduced again, but by a lower amount. And the travel card zones were 1, 2, 3A, 3B, 3C. The city and West End zones were merged into the central zone, which is still in existence today. 
in the beginning, the travel card was bus and underground only and could not use, be, use between Woodford and Epping on the central line or Woodford and North Wheel Driver, north of Moor Park on the Metropolitan line, nor north of Queen's Park on the Bakerloo line at the junction. That simply being that as it was a joint operation with British Rail, Euston, Watford Junction, Suburban Services, British Rail fares applied. In 1984, 85, um, the GLC was abolished. London, the London Transport Executive was abolished, replaced by London Regional Transports, who became the statutory body for provision of London's public transports. However, in 1985, the government decided that it was time to have integrated ticketing between London Transport and British Rail. And the travel card was extended to British Rail using the capital card, which was high, priced higher than the um, travel card, but gave full coverage using the same zones. As the 1980s progressed, um, and we reached 1989, the capital card was discontinued and the travel card extended to cover all of British Rail. So it was all the one ticket. In 1991, Zone 5 was split into two to create Zones 1 to 6, obviously, Zones 3A, 3B, 3C, being renumbered Zones 3, 4, 5. And things remained relatively stable um, on, the, on the underground and rail fares for a number of years. Um, you know, the zones haven't changed that much. An early map and a current day map would be largely recognisable as quite si and quite similar. However, the bus fare zones were became quite complicated. Zones in the central and inner zones during the 1990s were often raised above the fares in the outer in the outer zone, and there was a suburban bus zone until around about 2000. Also in the outer zone. There were local bus pass areas like would, that would cover, say, Barnet and Enfield, um, Waltham Forest and Redbridge, Havering and Dagenham. And there would be a maximum fare in one local bus pass area and a higher fare to go in between the two local bus pass areas, like from Havering to Barking, would be higher than the Havering area fare. And it got rather complicated. Um, but in round about 2000, 2001, the zonal structure was simplified. It was a flat fare of 70p in the suburbs, £1 if you're going into or in central London, 40p for children. And eventually, um, it, London became a flat fare across the whole network. Children got free travel, but and that's how it's been ever since. The cash fare rose above what was always the card, which was introduced in 1983. So in 2012, Contact List Page you Go was introduced for bus fares, in extending to the rest of the network in 2014. Indeed, I was employed as a bus driver at Ashgrove Garage in London, working for Arriva, when the contactless bank card became available and I encouraged several passengers to try their bank card rather than paying cash or getting an emergency ticket and by doing it by word of mouth I was helping to spread the message but the situation today is quite stable there are now zones 7, 8, 9 which cover the old um, area, cover areas 
Cover areas are covered by the Oyster card, but not in the former zones 1 to 6. And although Oyster card is valid to various other places, like certain station stands get the care pool out to Chanford up to Watford. And you can go contact this as far as Luton Airport Parkway. Um, they're outside the fare zones and different fare structure applies. There are... They're saying it's a flat fare on a bus. You've got a hopper ticket or a hopper fare, which is valid for one hour, and you can do as many bus rides as you can within that time frame. There's a daily price cap, quickly price caps, which are the equivalent of the old paper travel card. Um, you'd pay something like seven pounds forty for a one, two, three, eight ticket, and you had unlimited travelling load zones for a week. You may have seen on maps in the 1980s, travel card sectors. If your ticket was in zone 1, did not have zone 1, you could only travel in the east sector, or the north, west or south sector, as shown on the map, on the shoe maps at the time. But I have no recollection of this ever being enforced. Um, but, as I say, today you just... Paper tickets are virtually a thing of the past. The fare for a paper ticket on the underground is much more than a Oyster card or contactless page go, your bank card. And I can see cash fares, like they were on the buses on the underground, eventually being abolished. National Rail is a bit different because, it, because obviously if you're travelling out of... London, you might get on at, say, Alexandra Palace, and you may be travelling up to Hatfield or Stevenage, and you may still need to purchase a paper ticket, even though there's many apps and the like available these days to do it all online. But, as I say, it's 40 years since Fair's Fair, which, but which on, on the underground, did bring in the central and west end zone, but no outer zones. That had to wait until... Just a ticket. I hope I've covered it in enough detail to give you a basic idea, and I'll put and uh, I hope that the just the tickets to photos, which I'll put up on a medicine list video, will prove to be of interest. Thanks for watching, and thanks to listening to my waffle.